I'd like to welcome Jimmy Newson. He's an entrepreneur, a filmmaker, and the co-founder of a movement called A Billion Entrepreneurs. Jimmy, thanks for coming to the show today. Angela, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. And we want to know a little bit about you today, and how did you get into filmmaking? Oh, uh, well, trial and error, I would say. Um, <laughs> it, I, I started off as a, as I didn't at the time know it, I was, a, I was experiencing entrepreneurial traits, um, but we just called it hustling back then. Um, uh, doing how whatever. old were you at that time? Uh, let's see, I was selling candy in the school when I was about 12. So I was making, uh, making my first dollar uh, when I was 12 years old. And from there I was kind of hooked. And I said, I like this money thing. I like selling things. I like finding needs for people. Because by the time you get to second period, you're pretty hungry and you can't wait till, to wait till lunch. <laughs> so you need to give me a quarter so you can get this lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for, you went from candy ma candy seller to filmmaker. No, there was a lot of other steps in between there. But um, what I what I came to realize as I was going on this journey was I I wanted to do something that had the ability to affect a lot of people, um, to reach a lot of people. Uh, so I knew it had to be an entertainment, uh, and I also knew that I had to uh, find a way of uh, doing that with technically the minimal amount of people as possible uh, to reduce the, the, uh, the possibility that it might not happen. Right. And so that kind of led me to this final stage of filmmaking because I also realized that in this digital age, uh, content is king. So if you can be on one, the, the creating end of the content, you have the ability to always stay in the game. Did you come from New York? No, I actually, I, uh, I was born in Massachusetts. I went, uh, I grew up in Indiana. I went to school in Florida, and then I took everything I learned and came to New York. <laughs> wow, do you have, uh, were your parents entrepreneurs, Jimmy? Uh, no, I actually, I grew up in a single home. It was just my mom, it was me, my sister, and my brother. Uh, we were actually uh, very poor. Um, and uh, I realized, in my teens that if I was going to try to do something a little bit different that I would have to leave because what happens is you're surrounded by your environment and sometimes the environment can get in the way of you progressing so the other option was to take myself out of the environment and put myself in another situation where people didn't know me so if I told them I was something then they pretty much had no no objections of believing that which gave me the confidence to do what I needed to do so by taking yourself out of the story, so mm -hmm. to say. You created your own story and made yourself confident and poised and knowledgeable and you've just been really selling yourself in a sense of your, your filmmaking services and helping entrepreneurs? Yeah, uh, well, like I said, it, it's, uh, the, the, the filmmaking thing wasn't really what I, was, was, uh, what, what I realized I wanted to do, and it's actually not what I want to do. My, my purpose is to help people tell the stories to the world. And when you, when, you, when you realize what your purpose is, then you're able to align yourself with, with situations and, and more or less say, than saying yes, figure out what to say no to, and then it helps you propel yourself faster and farther. Uh, so filmmaking is just one of those tools that I use to help myself, as well as the people even in the film, tell their stories to the world. Because we learn, I think we learn a, a lot when we're able to experience through other people's visions and other people's failures and other people's successes. That's it. So tell me a little bit about how you found funding for this movie. Of this documentary, it is a billion entrepreneurs. Well, uh, well, I, I found it in a few different ways, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, we, we, we actually did a, we actually did two Kickstarter, two campaigns, two crowdfunding. The first one was the Indiegogo campaign. The other one was a Kickstarter campaign. We failed horribly with the first campaign um, because we didn't really realize what we were getting into. Um, there's a lot of preparation. There's a lot of work. Uh, there's a lot of um, moving parts, uh, you really need to employ any and everybody that you can possibly get your hands on to convince them to be a part of this, this process. 
Um, the second campaign, we, we were prepared a little bit better. It was still rough. It was still tough. There's a lot to, that goes in. But we set a goal for uh, a, a lesser goal of $200,000, and we made it probably three days before the campaign was over. Excellent. So, uh, Excellent. So A Billion Entrepreneurs, the movie, is going into production. And will we be able to see that movie in theaters? Yes, it's, it's in production now. Um, when you're making a movie, there's a lot of things that happen uh, that you don't expect. Um, <laughs> and so we, we're pretty much, we're, we've probably got about 150 hours worth of filming done. We're in post-production now, uh, but we're still making changes and adjustments as, as we go along. Uh, but the goal is, you know, what, a few things weren't in place, so we're actually trying to prepare that now, like building a stronger uh, network, of, uh, whether it's social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, relationships with organizations that aligned with the film and aligned with the mission of the film uh, to, to see an entrepreneur in every home uh, around the world. So you're talking a billion entrepreneurs, you're talking 3.8 people per home. That technically equals a billion. So if one person in each household considered themselves the entrepreneur, then we could reach that goal. Excellent. So we can find a billion entrepreneurs online. Yeah, we Just can. A billion entrepreneurs dot org is the uh, is is the um, email is the web address. Uh, but I, I actually realized I didn't answer your question. Uh, we we're working with some very unique organizations and companies that will allow others to screen the film for us. We're not necessarily sure when the film is going to be complete, but we're hoping somewhere sometime by the end of this year because we, like I said, we're making adjustments. We're really working on the relationships and the partnerships that we need to take this as big as we really want it to be. Okay. So, Jimmy, I want to thank you for sharing your insights and your purpose, your thank passion you. as an entrepreneur and a filmmaker, and we look forward forward to singing the movie A Billion Entrepreneurs. Thank you. I really appreciate being on the show. Thanks, Angela. Thank you, Jimmy. Agim Vigensic is the owner of Nino's Restaurant. It's an Italian restaurant. They just celebrated their 20th year. And I have Agim here to tell us how he began in the restaurant business. So tell us how you started, Agim. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Montenegro which is a little small country next to Croatia, next to Albania, across the street from Italy. Uh, I started, uh, when I came here, I was 17 years old. I was, uh, I was looking for a job, and I find Nino's was the day before they opened up the restaurant, one week before I went to look for a job, and then they, uh, they, they were looking for somebody in a kitchen, and I started working there as a dishwasher first. And then uh, one week later, a couple of weeks later, they bus boy, then a waiter, then uh, after that the, re the owner wanted to sell the restaurant and I bought the restaurant 10 years later. Uh, so your career started in the restaurant business? Yes. And did you have any experience from your home country in restaurant Yeah, well, I had a little bit uh, working in a back home uh, cafes as a, for, for a little bit back home and but not too much experience. Okay, so a lot of your experience you got here, yes. while you were working at Nino's. At Nino's. Yes. Your parents are they in the restaurant business? No, my parents are not in the restaurant business. No. They do different uh, work. Uh, they have. They're in, um, but they're not entrepreneurs, right? They work for companies. They work for companies, exactly. In Manhattan. Yes. And uh, clearly, I mean, every time I go to Nino's, you're there. Uh, it's uh, that's that's what we do every day, and that's what we try to do for the past 20 years, past 10 years. I own it, and that's what I tell them all the time in my meetings. Um, so you started off as a dishwasher, and then worked as a uh, busboy, and then you know learned the front and the back of the house. And what about the chef? He's still the, he was the first. Uh, we started together. He's still there. Uh, he's our main chef. His name is Bernardo Rosario. He works very hard. He's the one who, who made it, the restaurant the way it is too, because it's food. And uh, does he make new dishes, or do you have any input on that, on any specials that you offer? Both of us, we work together. I have uh, sometimes input. I was, 
I always try to bring new dishes, talk to him about it, and he brings new dishes. Where did you learn your work ethic? Because I see you and your staff. It's a very hard business, a, a restaurant business. So where did you learn your work ethic from, do you think? Or did, was it always inside of you? I love what I do. So uh, it's, it's inside, I guess. Uh, it's not uh, you learn something. You have to have it in you. I, my beliefs. That's what I think. Uh, I always want to, since I was a kid, I want to have something. I want to have a business. So happened to be a Ninos, I guess. Uh, happened to be a Ninos, the dream, I guess. Uh, that's it. So Nino was the original owner. Nino, yes, Nino was. And then Joe bought, and Joe bought it from Nino. from Nino. Yes. And now you're the owner. So yes. When Joe decided to sell the business, whether you were ready or not, that I had to. I was. I was ready. I was not ready. But you know what? Uh, he made me ready. He was. <laughs> yeah, you know. He made you ready. Yes. To be a business owner. Yes, exactly. He he helped me out with a lot of things. He he taught me what I know a lot. And from Nino, of course, too. Right. Nino was. Uh, I'm still friends with his family and with Joe, of course. Right. They're great uh, to me all the time, and still see them most of the time. So. So you had good supportive family. Good supportive family. Good me good mentors yep. in the business. Great. And you understand the value of the customer. Uh, Clearly. I, I try to understand all the time. Clearly. Mo so, uh, Agim, I want to thank you for coming on the show. We'll see you again. Thanks for having me here. I really appreciate it. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, very, you much. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Days are forever, the days we'll remember The time we've surrendered has gone too fast So stay here forever, let's be here together The days of September will never last
days we'll remember the time we've surrendered has gone too fast to stay here forever let's be here together the days of september will never last times have come back to me times are long for all my life so come and share them with me keep the Lord inside I have Lenny Morales here from Pros and Icons, a new power pop band. Uh, originated from Staten Island and Lenny thanks for coming to the show today thank you so much for having me I, you have a very interesting story and you're very young to be an entrepreneur so tell us how pro, pros and icons got started well I knew Nicholas Yursak the other guitarist of pros and icons and we started writing songs and he said we need a singer and I agreed and he said I, I know this kid and the theater program, his name's Joe, and then we found Joseph Masando by looking at his YouTube account, and it was phenomenal. And then it just fell into place, that simple. So you started out with three people. Yep, the three, three of band. us, the three of us started the band. We wrote the EP together, Iconography, and then we started playing live a few months ago, late March or April, and we need a bass player and a drummer, and that's when Tyler O'Leary joined us and Nicholas Cardona. So you have a five-piece band. Yep. You write music. And did you graduate from college? I did. I graduated in 2013 from Rampo College, and I have a degree in music with a concentration in industry, and I also have a business essentials certificate from the Annis Field School of Business. All right. So what happened after graduation? Did you just go on the road or were you looking for a job? Well, before graduation, about a semester before, I decided to start my own business. And the reason for this was sophomore year, I remember my advisor, Ben Neal, he said, all of you should create an app. And this was Music Business One. And I was thinking, oh, why would I create an app? Because I love music. I want to be a rock star, you know. <laughs> and then now I have my own app. And the reason I chose to start a business was because it's different. And I fell in love with the entrepreneur life, because that's what I learned throughout my college career, that it's not about just getting a regular job, you know, nine to five. You need to do something different. and I think the whole reason why I was in college was to do something different. And Ben Neal taught me, you know, be an entrepreneur. So, like I said, I started My Ticket Life. It's a mobile application for iPhone and Android that lets you store concert tickets, movie tickets, anything with a ticket, and it scrapbooks them and you could share them with your friends. So, this app, My Ticket Place? My Ticket Life. Oh, excuse me. My Ticket Life, you can buy a ticket to a concert and then find out who else is going? Well, you can't buy it on there due to other places you can buy tickets. What you do is, let's say you want to see Pros and Icons, right? Yes. So you want to see Pros and Icons tonight. You could take your ticket, literally have the ticket, take your phone, take a picture of the ticket. Now your ticket is up and you could put all pictures that you took there and let's say you went with a bunch of friends. They could upload their pictures that they went with you. They say they were with you. You could upload all your pictures, and it saves it for you. And any concert you go to that you do this, it'll save it in date order or alphabetical order, and now you'll forever have your tickets and your memories saved. Wow, so it's all online. Yep. It's all interactive, and you can really build a fan base from there. I expect. Yeah, you, you could, there are so many things you could do with it because 
if you know with YouTube, Twitter, you could be YouTube famous or Twitter famous. There are people that go to hundreds of concerts. Think about people who like the Grateful Dead or Fish or Dave Matthews. Those fans go to a lot of concerts. And I bet a lot of them are known throughout that community, just like there are YouTube celebrities. And so you could do that with My Ticket Life. You could be known for all your tickets. Or you could even take the entrepreneur life to a new level by using pros and icons with it. So I can make an account for our band and all our fans can upload their pictures to our account and that's direct interaction with fans. So not only can I promote my ticket life as the owner to the general public, I could use it for my band too and now that's two different pathways for it and more opportunities for me. Excellent. So in, in the old days, uh, having a band, I mean, I come from a family of musicians. My, my husband, my children, they're all musicians. So usually the way to do that is to create a CD, go out on the road, work the road, uh, you know, promote the band, have a photographer. But you're doing it a different way. Yes, because these days, they, the record labels won't fun to put you on the road anymore and that's pretty unfortunate because that's where the fun is and that's where you actually make the money but they want you to build your fan base on social media so by us building our fan base on social media that calculates the ticket sales but you still need a photographer we work with our good friend Vlad Grotch he is great at photography and we're with him all the time. He follows us and he puts up photos all the time and that builds our social media because we're staying active. And then record labels and booking agents will see that and then they'll put us on the road, get us a record deal. So that's how they want you to do it these days and that's the route we're going. But, well, you're in a pretty impressive place. Uh, you were uh, part of a Z100 Yes. Uh, type of promotion? Yeah, we were in this contest to be named Z100's hometown hero of 2014. And out of about 150 artists, we were in the top 25. And from there, two record executives and the program director of Z100 pick five finalists, and we made that cut. So in the final round, there were five of us and we won that final round by votes and the judges picked as well. But, you know, to get our votes, we worked really hard. Uh, we went to our high schools, our <laughs> colleges, we went to the mall, to every single store, asking them to support, you know, the local band. So they just had a vote online. Yep, and they could vote every day. They liked our music and we even went to colleges and knock on every dorm door and it was so much fun but it's the hard work that pays off because we won and we got to play at the All Access Lounge on December 12th and we played with Megan Trainer, Rickston, Charlie XCX, Kaiza, Kaiza and it was just a great experience because now we were playing with all these people we would say oh I wish I could play with them and now we're regularly getting gigs with these artists. How fun, how exciting that is. It's great. You're living the dream. Yep. You and, you and all the band members. Well, how long is Pros and Icons in existence? The, when Nick, Joseph, and myself started the band, it was 2013, early 2013, but we didn't start playing shows until last April. So that's very recent. Yeah, it's very recent, exploded. less than a year ago. Yeah, like it's that. great, and it's just that we're consistently working, and it's hard work, like I said, and we're staying very persistent and using all the options that we have to make it. You can't just play shows. It doesn't work like that. You need to do things outside the box, how we did with the voting by knocking on dorm doors or even using my ticket life, you need multiple doors open. That's the only way you have any shot of making it. That's it. So you're, uh, a future employer would be very impressed with, with your tenacity and your creativity. But I think that you have the 
you know, the quality of the entrepreneur, that, Thank you. that uh, tenacity and that willingness to succeed and to not, you know, just keep trying over and over and being persistent. And I think the rest of the band is probably like that too, right? They are. That's why it's working. And we don't see any other option but to be successful. Because we're putting our minds to it and it will happen because it's our dream and we want it to happen and we don't think anything's out of reach. And it's not. It's definitely not. So Lenny, I want to thank you for bringing the band, uh, yep, introducing thank. the band to CTV today. And everyone can find uh, the band Pros and Icons. Can you spell that for us? P-R-O-S and I-C-O-N-S. Pros and Icons. All right. Thank, thank you so you. much. And all the best for you, thank you. and the band. Thank you. Inside